Hello, New York educators. Welcome to our four-part series focusing on MTSS, a multi-tiered system of support. New York defines MTSS as a data-driven decision-making framework that is meant to increase effectiveness, efficiency, and equity of instruction to make a positive impact on the academic, behavioral, and emotional growth of every student. Now that's a lot of factors to cover in just one sentence, but we're going to break down the essential components of the New York MTSS framework for you. Screening, progress monitoring, multi-level prevention system, and database decision-making. So don't miss out on this four episode series for ways Savvis Learning Company can help your district provide the level and the type of support necessary for your students. Enjoy. Thanks, Raya, and welcome to part one of Screening to Identify Needs. I'm Gretchen Ghost, your intervention specialist here with Savvis Learning Company, and I am joined with our assessment expert, Dr. Tavi Wells. Welcome. Thank you for having me, Gretchen. All right, so the whole point of this entire thing is to talk about MTSS, and what better place to start than the beginning? Where do we start? And I think everyone knows we start with assessment, but when we talk about assessment and that's where we start, what is really that role of assessment? Um, Okay. So in MTSSI, um, you guys have in New York, assessment is at the very beginning of the process and it's all throughout actually. So at the very beginning, we want to identify students who are possibly at risk and need some kind of support or additional intervention. Um, it gives data that uh, is part of the whole picture um, for looking at what a child needs. Um, and then as you go through, you need to progress monitor to see how well they're doing and are they are the interventions working or do they need additional support? So we always talk about assessments. You know, we have all kinds of assessments, but are all assessments created equal? Can I give the same assessment across the board every time? Um, No, they're not all created equal and no one assessment is gonna do everything um, that we need all of assessment to do. So you have like teacher created assessments, you have, um, you know, maybe statewide assessments, you have vendor uh, produced assessments um, and you have different um, purposes for all of these too. In general, though, you want your assessments to directly measure uh, whatever the skill or behavior is um, that you're wanting to measure. You want it to be able to produce, um, for some pieces, particularly academic, you want it to have a quantitative data, meaning like it's a numerical score of some sort. And then you want to make sure that it provides reliable and valid data. Um, And that kind of goes back to, does it measure what we're saying it's gonna measure? And does it do that reliably? Um, We also um, need to look at the length of the test. We wanna be as efficient as possible. So um, we don't want a super long test if we can do the same thing uh, with fewer items and less time if possible. Um, and one way to do that is to have, have an adaptive test. So we ask students some questions and depending on how well they do, they get different sets of questions. Um, and that's one way you can uh, you know, use less instructional time to find out that information. Um, and then for the MCSS process, a good way um, to assess at the very beginning is look at all the students at the same time with a universal screener. And then depending on how well they do on that screener, give them different diagnostics. So you can get a little bit more granular with the data um, in that student's area of um, performance. Oh my God, you said so much in (laughs) that in that little piece right there that just really hit and resonate. I mean, you started with all the different assessments and there was, you said in there, uh, one assessment's not gonna tell you everything you need to know. And I'm a firm believer as an educator that just like we teach a whole child, we need to assess a whole child. So I love that you hit all the different ways that we can assess because not every student is a great test taker. Um, And then talking about that student, I love how we're talking about 
we're going to take that screener first and we're not all going to take the same test because I remember watching my students and giving the same assessment um, or standardized a test assessment to my gifted kids, to my tier one students, and then to my tier three students. And it was just torturous. So this makes so much more sense to really get the data we need in a quick way that's not just going to give you anything because they've got testing fatigue. I this is amazing. So we we're talking about it. We we've, we've got the assessment. It's not a one size fits all. It's going to be an assessment for that student that's going to get granular and then we get the data. What do we do with that data? Um so depending on the kind of assessment you give, you're going to have different data, right? I mean, um as a teacher, when I taught, I would look around at their faces and many times you get to know the students i mean at the beginning you don't know them right but as you get to know them you can just kind of tell you know whether they're getting it or not so that's one kind of data that we can get from an assessment that's an informal you know formative type assessment absolutely Um, but when we're talking about like universal screeners and diagnostics um those give different kind of data. Um, that's that quantitative data I was talking about. And there's two main kinds of data that we get from those kinds of assessments, the more formal kind. Um, one is criterion reference. So like we can look at a standard and say, is the student understanding this one standard? Um, or we can look at norm referenced, meaning of the students that took this same item or the same test, how well does this student um, compare to those other students. And um, so you have a norm norm referenced score too. Criterion reference scores are, you know, could be a percent correct, it could be a raw score, uh, could be a scale score. A norm referenced score is typically like a percentile, um, something, something like that. Um, but you could have a scale score that represents both. Um, it's scaled based on their peers but it's also um, based on standards. So uh, that's that's kind of, it gives you both at the same time, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then a vertical scale is actually better than what we call horizontal scale. Okay, so now we're, we're getting into our, our, <laughs> our math words, our academic vocabulary is starting to show up here. Vertical scale, horizontal scale, what is the difference and and why does it matter? Okay, that's a great question. Um, so a horizontal scale is, it means you're looking at how well all the students did in a particular grade or for a particular test um, for a particular subject area. So you could have like math grade five, right? And you're looking at how well all the students that took math grade five did. Um, and looking at a scale, scale score. Vertical scale score does that too, plus it has the same scale over multiple grades. So um, for example, MSDA is vertically scaled, meaning you can compare K to eight because it's a 1000 to 2000 vertical scale. And you would expect as students progress through the grade levels that their scale score would go up. And that's better just because it helps us look at your year growth and it helps us get a better picture of where the students are within that whole K-8 span. So thinking from an administrator lens or a district lens, that vertical score is really important in identifying, you know, maybe areas where we can grow or areas where we're really excelling and we can dive deep and say, what are we doing in these areas that are making our students just grow and succeed in, in leaps and bounds? Um, that's that's really amazing. So we've got that. We've got this vertical data. We're talking about the multi-tiered system. What What do we do next? Um, Well, you use that data, hopefully, along with other data, like, for example, your students' faces. Um, You know, there are different parts of MTSSI. You know, you have not just academic, but behavioral and social emotional. And those all kind of play a part and will help inform what specific strategies will work for what specific child. Um, 
many times in, you know, tier two, you're looking at smaller groups, like three to five students. And for that, you may look for um, specific gaps, let's say, um, in, a, in a certain domain. Um, so let's say, for example, I'm uh, teaching fifth grade and I notice my students um, overall did a little bit worse in fractions. But if I dig a little further, I see some students um, did a lot worse than their peers, maybe even in the class. So those students, I would want to um, pull out and do something specific, a small group um, intervention there. And that would, again, depend on the other data that you're collecting, not just academic um, data from one particular test, hopefully. Um, but at the beginning of the year, that's maybe all you have to go on. So it is important as you go through the year to adjust and make sure you're including other data to inform those groups that they're flexible so that it's not just like one group of five students that's doing fractions for the whole year. You know, maybe three of them are doing much better. And then you're going to need to pull in other students for other reasons. Um, so whatever kind of data you use, remember that it's not one and done, um, that students change over time, that they learn at different learning rates. Um, so you need to check in frequently. Um, a screener, a diagnostic is good, especially at the beginning of the year. Um, but you need to do these kind of formative assessments as you go on. And then check in, like check in again in the fall or check in again in the spring with the wider, you know, uh, diagnostic assessing all of the courses standards so that you can see, are the interventions working? But um, in any case, make sure you look at, um, make sure you look at using quality assessments uh, no matter when you're doing that. And you will be off to a great successful start. No, I, this has been amazing thinking about not just what what assessment am I giving and why am I giving it? But then also looking at that data and really helping to understand what this data gives me and then how I use it to identify my student needs. When we think about tiered intervention, a lot of times people just focus on that tier three. And I love how you are expressing, this is how I'm going to focus on my tier one students. Here's how I'll focus with my tier two. And then of course, here's what I'll do with tier three. And I'm going to check along the way for every tier. I'm not just focused on one subset of students. So um, I think that's a really important piece to all of this as well. Like you said, I, I'm still loving that it's not a one size fits all and that we are actually giving them an assessment that's gonna go granular and not frustrate them while we do it. All right, everyone, <laughs> this is the end of episode one. Thank you, Dr. Tavy Wells for joining us and sharing your expertise. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Gretchen. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> All right, everyone, this has been episode one. Please join us. Come back. Visit episode two. New York, we're here for you. Until we meet again, stay safe and stay savvy. Talk to you soon. Thank you for tuning in today. Please reach out to your Savas account manager if you have any questions or would like to request more information about our complete solution to meet the essential components of MTSS. 